Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the FinSuite CMS library for Webflow. We're in the live example going through the sort component. Let's look at sorting items inside a dynamic list. This video is covering example one and two. They're very similar and it's going to help us understand what sort reverse means. Let's first go to example one. Here in example one, we're going to sort by project number. It's going to be targeting this project column and it's going to sort in ascending and descending order. So right now we are showing these items in descending order, starting at 500 and it's going all the way down to 400 and one. When I click on this, it's going to reverse the sort. 401, 500. And there you go. As you're clicking on this, it is changing the sort direction. We're going from 500 to 401. Let's now go to example two. And here we're showing project one to project 100. And as I click on this sort, it's going to do the same thing. Project one to project 100. And it's going to change from ascending to descending. Now, the reason why this one is reverse and this one is not reverse is because example two starts out with the grid already sorted. We're already sorting this CMS list by project number. So, if we didn't have reverse turned on, if this was just normal sort with sort reverse as false, then the first click wouldn't do anything because it's already sorted. If we have project one through 100 and I click this, it's going to sort project one to 100, which is already happening. So we are putting a sort reverse on it so that the first click is going to reverse the sort right away. So immediately we're going to see something happen. The grid is going to be sorted by right away. Nice. And that's it working. This is example one and two. We are sorting by project number and let's go into designer and see how this is set up. We're in designer and we're going to look at what we need to set up this sorting on our site. The very first thing we have to do is make sure we have a class on our collection list element, not our collection list wrapper, our collection list element. And here we have the convenient class naming of collection dash list. The next thing we need is a class on our button. This is called filter button. This is the button that is going to actually run the filtering. When we click through this, it is going to run our sorting. So we need a unique class on this button. And the last thing we need to do is in settings of that button, we need to have a data attribute called sort by. And here in sort by, we give it a value and the value is the class that we want to sort by. What does this mean, the class that we want to sort by? Notice how we are defining as a class here, class name, and what that's doing is sorting by name. So we want to sort by project, so name is the class that we're using. If we wanted to sort by year, if this was a year filter, I would go ahead and sort by year. And that's it. We have our class on the collection list. We have a class on the button that's going to trigger the filtering. And then we have a data attribute of sort by to tell the library what that button is sorting by. We're in custom code and the very first thing we're going to do is add the FNSuite CMS library script to the page. As you can see, this is not the real script file. When we launch the library, we'll have this file available for you. Next, we have to run our project specific script where the very first thing we do is run a function that happens immediately. We're going to create a new instance of the FS library and target it 
at our collection list. This is the class that we gave to that collection list element of our dynamic list. We're storing that entire new instance in a variable called projects grid. Projects grid is going to be used right below and we're going to run our sort component on the projects grid. The first thing we have to give it is the sort trigger. The sort trigger is the class of the button or class of the element that's going to be controlling the sort. Whatever it is, whatever that class is, goes to the trigger. It's, te it's telling the library, when this is clicked, go ahead and run the sort. Sort reverse, true or false. I'm an example two, we have sort reverse is true. In example one, sort reverse is set to false. If you are already sorting your grid and you want the user to be able to sort by what you are already sorting by, I recommend starting out with sort reverse true. And the reason is if it's false and you're already sorting by that value, that first click is going to be nothing. So if this was false right here, on example two, the very first click would do nothing because it's already sorted and it's sorting by something that's already sorted. So setting sort reverse to true will reverse the sort. It will start on the first click to descend. Active class, optional, could make sense, could not make sense based on your UI. Here we have sort active as the active class. This can add a background color, maybe a different background image showing an arrow up or down. You can play around with this. It is not required, but you have the option to customize that active class of the button. Animation, duration zero. I recommend having a duration of zero for that animation. Animation in this library happens when things leave and enter the grid. If something is entering the grid or leaving the grid, it can be animated. When we're sorting through items, nothing is leaving or entering. Everything is already there. So when you set this animation, how you, ex how you envision it to be, it's not gonna work like that because nothing is actually entering or entering. Nothing is entering or exiting. So duration zero just gives a quick sort up and down and I think it looks nice and clean. Go ahead, play around with that, see what happens when you put some type of duration and enable that animation. And that's it, we have our sort set up. This is all the code we need in order to sort up and down a specific item inside our collection item list. That's effing sweet.